When you're suffering from sinus symptoms like head congestion, you might not understand what exactly sinuses are, and more importantly, why you have them. Fortunately, we've teamed up with the makers of Sudafed to break down sinuses functions and toss out a life raft in the sea of medical terminology. Now, sinuses catch a bad rap since they're often associated with being stuffed up, experiencing head pressure, and generally feeling yucky. But in spite of sinuses' unpleasant associations, they're arguably our face's most underrated anatomy. Sinuses are hollow cavities inside our skull and facial bones. And structural bonus, thanks to their weightless nature, our heads are lighter and easier to hold up. To get an idea of where sinuses reside, these interconnected cavities behind and around our nose, eyes, and forehead uncannily resemble a foundation contour map. No, really! Collectively known as our paranasal sinuses, these air-filled pockets are divided up into four pairs. We have a pyramid-shaped sinus in each cheek called a maxillary sinus. The largest of the bunch, maxillary sinuses are also the most prone to sinus issues. Next, we have a frontal sinus behind each eyebrow, and straddling our noses are our honeycomb-like ethmoid sinuses. Finally, a pair of air pockets called the sphenoid sinuses are tucked behind the ethmoids, which are best visible from a side view. Now don't forget to blend because just like proper contouring, healthy sinuses work together. Although scientists aren't entirely sure why we evolved them, sinuses helpfully warm, moisten, and filter out all of the microorganisms, dust, dirt, and contaminants we breathe. Considering how you're constantly breathing, these bone holes are workaholics and neat freaks to boot. Naturally, sinuses don't want that filtered air gunk hanging out in their hollows, which are lined with a soft pink tissue called mucosa. In a healthy sinus, that lining secretes a thin, clear mucus that collects any contaminants we've inhaled. Tiny hairs called cilia act like itty bitty brooms, sweeping the mucus toward our sinuses' door like openings called osteums. In other words, our sinuses are almost like a curling team inside our faces. What's the ultimate destination for this osteum-bound curling, otherwise known as mucosillary clearance? Since all sinus roads lead back to nose, not Rome, the mucus flows to the nasopharynx, a crossroads where the back of our nose, mouth, and throat meet. Then, we swallow the mucus. File that fact under gross science you definitely, maybe, didn't want to know. But even workaholics have to take sick days, and cold viruses can potentially damage cilia, inflame sinuses mucosa, and block the osteum openings. If that happens, sinuses often produce more mucus to try and flush out the bacteria or, if mucus becomes trapped in a clogged sinus with nowhere to go, it can become irritated, which we feel via facial discomfort and other unpleasant side effects, also known as pain, head congestion, and a never-ending cough. Most of the time, however, we can thank our lucky sinuses that for whatever reason nature intended them, these multitasking facial cavities keep us <sighs> breathing easy.